It's me, Mikey Pipes. I have been waiting here for almost an hour and 45 minutes. It's supposed to leave at 5.10. It is now 5.58 p.m. Delayed? It is delayed. They are delaying my my trip to Vegas. Yeah, well, going back up to him again. Mm -hmm. Third delay in an hour and a half. So my plane got delayed now for the fourth time. And I've never seen the Sky Club so packed before. Check this out. It is literally packed. And this is just a quarter of one side. There are so many people in here. They are closing down the doors where it's one in and one out. Crazy. Apparently there's some kind of like weather system coming into like the Northeast and flights are delayed, flights are canceled, but I wanna, man, I wanna give condition there to cannabis. Don't you know that? Cannabis condition there. So I'm gonna give it one more. And then I'm gonna go home. All right. It is 6:21 p.m. Thursday, June 16th. It just doesn't end. After three double Grey Goose Rocks lime, I'm outside now. Look, I'm like in prison. Oh, flashbacks! I'm gonna give it one more. One more. If we don't. Board at 7:20. I'm out of here. I'm going back home, and we'll have to do this another time. So stay tuned. I promise you. Stick around. Well, I made it. It's the equivalent of 3:30 New York time. It is 91 degrees out, and it's 12:30 at night. This is effing crazy. Do you have huh? your own the menu. Tits? The menu, yeah, beautiful girl there. So, uh, Sophia's our treasure. Sophia's? Oh, so the other guy was Sophia's too. Yeah, I have a limousine for you. I'll get you guys in three minutes. You should go. Go for like an hour. It's right there. It's like the, problem, hour. the problem is that we're transvestites. It doesn't matter. Is it, is it, come back, come back. Hold on, so the last guy, last guy said we had donkey punching on the menu. You, you can donkey punch. <laughs> no, I'm we, have, we, have the, we have the car, we have the car. Punch. Donkey punch. punch. She's going to give you two free scratch and sniff. Two free scratch and sniff. Yeah, scratch and sniff. Finger banging too? Yeah, finger banging too. Finger yeah. banging too. Yeah. And Sophia's. Sophia's. Oh, Sophia's. Can I, can I drink like this? Yes, everywhere. You do whatever the fuck you want. So, this is going a little bit like Times Square. Nah, we're good, we're good, we're good. Thank you, thank you. A little bit like Times Square, you got a live popper in life. Leave it alone. Sophia's. Sophia's is the shit. This was the fanciest. This is the Bellagio. The Bellagio, it used to be. Now it shoots up. Is it closed because it's like one o'clock in the morning? It's actually two o'clock no, in the morning. No, it's on. It's on a schedule. It'll go every hour or something. You know we're here to to grow pot. Of course. <laughs> Holy shit! So we're walking. We're at the. We're approaching the Bellagio. We're staying at the Cosmo. Holy shit! So I hear that. that blue light up. This is all the cosmos. So, are you, do, I, do I have a balcony? Those are all balconies. Hey, uh, did you give me a balcony room? No? They said they didn't have any available. Flamingo, Bally's, that's Eiffel Tower. Exactly. You know, I've never been to Vegas, but it's so far, so far so good. All right, we got to find the uh, Latinas Chicas. And the shit shoots up. Every hour on the hour in front of the Bellagio. Um, like the water shoots up. By the way, it's 100 high. degrees out. I wonder what the evaporation rate is here. It doesn't even feel like it's no. 100 degrees. No, it's very dry. This is crazy. This is crazy. It's good stuff. Wow. Thanks for uh, bringing me along. Everything All right, guys. <laughs> We're at our first location. Potential site 
to grow some good stuff. This is sewage. Yeah, maybe the traps are dried out. Smell that. This is 10,000 square feet. Yep, we're gonna be recruiting. We're gonna be recruiting here, HVAC technicians, part-time. Yeah. Here's your What's phone. That? Is that important? Oh, Mason. <laughs> he, he, he has a big YouTube file over here. Oh. So now we got well, some like LEDs. I'm sure you get a lot of hits because, like, your condenser goes out. They're going to try to charge you eight for this. Especially for everything. Hey, you have the box. Come on, I'm more than that. <laughs> exactly. So, metal, metal halides and LEDs. You're going to have two levels here drainage. Okay. We got an air handler there. We have an air handler here. Fire control. What do we got here? It looks like. Uh, a carrier, ICP. Just break there. There's another one. A lot of security lights, cameras, fans. Eh, looks like they made a trip to Walmart, but we need to upgrade that. Alright, so this is one room of this 10,000 square foot facility that's not active right now. It's for sale to the highest bidder. Here we go. So the plan is, yeah, we have a, a, a sewer smell in this large room. The plan is to divide this room into four. A second floor office. All these ICPs, I'll show you the outdoor condensers shortly. Filters, just open returns. Check out these filters. But we have, I'm gonna guess probably around 20 systems. One, two, three, four, five, six, they're everywhere. <laughs> this has gotta get repurposed as long as we can use the existing equipment. It'll definitely save a tremendous expense. Here's all our line sets to each air handler. Going to outside, we have, uh, I want to say around 15 or 20 uh, side discharge condensers outside, but not bad, not bad. Got a ventilation hood, activated carbon filter. Again, we're in our infancy here. This was a grow house and they went bust. All right, let's check upstairs now. All right, some benches. So what's this? Some grease. So we got the mini splits. We got the mini splits here, look at them. Oh, hell no. The little chiller. They got an exposed rig, Larry. I don't know how they got away with this. It's a bunch of pile of shit. It would never pass the CCD now. And and what I guess, you know, this is what, we're told this here, these are issues too. What more in the downstairs, the beams are wooden. Not, oh, not not so we put a we put a drop we put a drop seat in right below this and that's vinyl. Gotcha. This is this, this is for, for midgets, vertically challenged people. Yes. That's like a unsafe work. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. Wow. Like literally it's a hair under five feet of height. Another air handler. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Yep, let's go see. You did so flawlessly. What do you see up there? All right, there's the Vegas Strip. There's all our Gree cond outdoor condensers. That's for that first room we saw here. Condenser. But most of the units, wow. And I got an old swamp cooler maybe. Let's see what we got here. some servicing definitely overkill definitely overkill let's take a look at some 
models, high pressure switch, the filter dryer outside. Looks like someone painted over it. Okay, I don't see any evidence of oil residue, which is a good thing. Because I'm here to be the HVAC consultant in this investment. And again, I don't have any tools with me other than my brain and my two hands, or right now one hand, but we're just checking everything. Got a lot of wobble on this roof. Nope. And maybe that's why we have all those side discharge condensers here and over there. Okay. I can smell the sewer gas from all the traps being drained out, uh, dried out inside the structure. Listen, it's, e it's easy to gut and do a new. It's the borderline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Sorry. Did you want to film me up for YouTube? That's sewer water. Yeah, look at the dumbass. You got to pour the water. Oh, we got an active water line up here. That's good, but it's not going to freeze, so it's one, yeah. unlike, unlike New York. We got the condenser right up there. What were they thinking? So I noticed we got pressure switches on all the condensers. Wow. High pressure, high pressure. Every single one has high pressure switches on every single condenser. They probably need to monitor that because I guess they're the temperatures. What's the ideal temperature for a room? Uh, with those HPS, probably 75, 76 degrees would be, but you use an inside controller with probes. Correct, so yeah. yeah. What kind of humidity do we do we need? Uh, you probably want to be right around like 40, 50 percent RH. Okay. Which it's kind of different. Get yeah. Those rooms. Yep. It's just these roofs get so hot in the summer. Like where we're standing right now. We'll be I can't even imagine. That's what my dad did. We moved from California, and he was a roofer out in California. And came out here, so I spent my whole life helping him get up on these fucking roofs. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a fairly large lot. We could do some prefabbed containers and get those up and running. Probably fifty to sixty thousand fully equipped. You know, plus you gotta get your product in there. But we could definitely fit a lot of pre-manufactured container ships, container ship trailers there, and it wraps around to the other side. So we have this one carrier side discharge unit. And I noticed a little rattling sound coming from it. Then I know that the line is frozen here. The line is frozen. So either we have a airflow issue, we could have a refrigerant charge issue, we could have a metering device issue, but it's not all 100%. We gotta find out why that's like that. I don't think it's gonna make or break the deal. We have a overkill amount of equipment here overkill but factoring in the btus of each metal halide bo uh, ballast and bulb that's the million dollar question oh, wow. look what it's is... ice it's ice in the middle of the desert it's 110 degrees out <laughs> that is the purest purest you're gonna get ice yeah exactly so here's a unit just came on we're waiting for the condenser fan motor to kick on. Now this one has a pressure switch on our high side. So if this is running properly, once we have the right amount of pressure coming in here, this fan motor is going to come on. Or it will not if there's something else wrong. Capacitor issue. Could have a seized motor. If I had a little stick, we could try to spin that, but... We have a lot of wobble on this roof. I was waiting to see if it comes on. So our compressor's running. 
Fan isn't. Fan's not running. Compressor's running. Yep. All right, and that would be our limitation. Whatever that's set to, we'll tell this to come on or turn off. And it hasn't come on yet. <laughs> so these are obviously obsolete, these three coolers there, but I think everything else is in, in service. There's still nothing yet, but it's hot as balls up here. Let's get back downstairs. Head on downstairs. Yeah, lack of maintenance. So, a lot of the filters there look clean, but we're gonna have to individually test the functionality of every single machine. All right, I'm gonna take a look at this air handler. We got a filthy filthy filter there, but let's take a look up of this air handler. I got the access panel kind of removed already. A little wobbly. There you go. I found a big giant channel lock up here. Let's see what we got. Let me put the phone down take this cover off. All right, I have the cover off. Surprisingly, a little bit of wobble on the, the blower motor assembly, but I don't have any indication of any dirt built or mold inside this unit. It's actually very, very clean. Got some relays. Take a look at our discharge. We have some, probably have a dirty, probably have a dirty um, blower wheel, which is contributing to the wobbling of that, as you can see. We're wobbling. Okay. But overall, not bad on this one. But we are gonna have to do service. Oh. Is that really a pot pot a pot yeah. leaf? Yeah. It's it's pretty dried out. <laughs> it smells like shit. Just like this whole building. Take a look at these panels. This is nothing compared to that other room. Scale. Carb activated carbon air scrubbers here. And a dehumidifier. 
It's like they were desperate to try to control humidity in this room. It's obvious they spent their money on the split systems they got here. Yeah. A bucket full of LED lights. Comes with the purchase of the property. But those containers, that, oh, the containers are really worthless. Do they come with the... Everything comes with the property. Sold as is, huh? Yeah. It's hollow. It's just fixtures. Yeah, these are LEDs. Yeah, up there are LEDs. These are all highlights. We're cheap Walmart fans. Get a little bosh. There's your relief. <laughs> Discharge line. Oh my god. Oh, that's the code. <laughs> Water filtration. Must be an RO. No, you just turn on, turn off. You ever see the yeah. Those guys are cool. They'll come along and do it. Cool. I don't know in a while, but I've seen them. It's like a small, it's basically like a dozer. Yeah. A pH tester. Okay. Yeah. You're probably paying more than a dozer. Yeah, I don't know how salvageable this is going to be with the amount of rust and corrosion on that pump, but. Conrad, Treasure Island, right outside the loading dock door. So, the plan here at this proposed facility, in that 10,000 square foot open room, we're going to repurpose those 20-ish split systems, divide up that area into eight or 10, basically hermetically sealed rooms. There's a lot of code that has to be followed here, a lot of regulations. You'd be able to wash down the entire room from ceiling to floor. We gotta deal with floor drains. We have to possibly you know, build a drop ceiling. We gotta run some duct work. Obviously there's way too much equipment here and BTUs that are available tonnage than what's needed. Uh, but quite possibly having a backup or a redundant system or have them cycle one, you know, like staging. Just food for thought. Again, I have zero, zero experience in the cannabis, growing cannabis industry, but it really is like an a, a untouched market and the potential to basically develop generational wealth is just mind blowing. All right, let's take another walk inside. All right, we have that's CO2, right? Yeah. So let's go in the first cage. I'm just gonna document this for the client and I'll be going away. All right, here's the next cage. Now we're in Eminent Dock. All right, now we are on site with this company that does indoor air quality testing. They also actually test the potency or the TH content of cannabis when it's produced and it gets state certified at that point. So right now we're going over the ductwork. We're taking swab samples of just the cocky that's in these, in these systems, in this ductwork. And uh, let's review what's above me here because it's very, 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 very interesting, but also very stupid. So right here, we got a furnace, all right? It's not being purposed for that, but there's a furnace. There's our evaporator coil. Here's our supply, a return air, sorry. And off of our evaporator, we have just a takeoff right off both sides of it, as you can see there, and one off the top. That's open, I guess it's cooling off this, I guess, loading dock room. But I want you to, sh I want to show you something. You see this one right here, right? Hold this for a second. Just check this out. Don't lose your orientation. You see that one right there? Let's go. Don't lose your orientation, ladies and gentlemen. Boom, okay? And then we have this here. Thank you. Now, let's go back here without losing your orientation. Yeah, Rube Goldberg, right? 
So that one we know, I've already shown, is a supply off the evaporator. This one here, all right, follow this, it goes up, we go across, we keep going across, boom, into square duct, and then it goes up to an exhaust hood. So we have extra exhaust above the small cooking area. Can I ask you guys a stupid question since I don't really know the cannabis ask, industry? Ask no, why do, we, why do you need a, like a, a commercial stove in here? That's for the manufacturing facility. There's a license, there's a, two licenses for this property. One is for growing okay. and another is for manufacturing. So manufacturing is taking the flour and making it into oils, gummy bears, baked products, any of that is all. So that's the factory. That's, and that, the, and that's the, fa this is the grow. That's the grow. That's so there's a grow license and there's a manufacturing license. Correct. Yep. Interesting. And you, the goal is to maintain that. Is there any other licenses involved in this? There's also a distribution license for ah. the transport. Understood. In 2014, when they opened everything up, so these five doctors put their little deal together and yeah. they were going for medical, right? And they got their medical, cultivation and production, then, in 2017, they were able to convert it to rec, production, uh, cultivation and production. So they're not a medical only anymore. Right. They're full rec, right? And then what did they sell to you? Or how did you, no, what did you acquire? they sold to an MSO, and the MSO is selling it to us. Okay. License, real estate, all of the above. Oh, yes. When does the license? When is the license? Is the license transferred? Um, all right. So right now, there's just a little bit of confidential conversation going on inside. Uh, who just arrived is an engineer slash architect who obviously has some history on this uh, facility, and it's quite interesting. You know, it started as a medicinal um, grow and manufacturing uh, property and then went to rec, which is recreational. So quite interesting, and then obviously something transpired where I think they basically got in over their heads. You know, they were just spending money, replacing, putting in stuff, lighting. Uh, you have a lot of overhead here, a lot of overhead. But the purpose of this video is to show you the, there's a lot more to HVAC than just what I do on a daily basis with my company, Pipe Doctor, in Valley Stream, New York. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada right now. It is 107 degrees out right now. 107 degrees. I have been brought on board to act as, quote unquote, the HVAC consultant here. Since I do have a background on refrigeration, these types of systems, if you tell me your temperature, humidity, the uh, square footage, cubic footage, heights, things like that, and doing a proper load calculation. You tell me what, what, give me some data, I can tell you what, where we need to be with far as equipment. The end result here is that, listen, we're in Las, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm in New York, Long Island, New York. We are going to need, we are going to need someone available, at first on a part-time basis, where, listen, we have one system down, it's not, it's blowing warm air. Um, you know, you need to be able to call upon somebody where, hey, listen, we don't want to call in a retail company, you know, a large company, you know, because the company's making the money at the end of the day. Let's find, you know, someone that's just starting out or maybe is like par partially retired and just wants to stay busy, right? We need someone like that. So if you're interested in possibly something very, very lucrative, Reach out to me, Mike at MikeyPipes.com. All right, guys, we're going to finish up here, and then I'm going to head over back to the Cosmo Hotel, and we're going to hit the, the pool scene and have a nice little afternoon. Thank you so much for watching. Be well. God bless. I'll catch you on the next one. Stay safe. This has got to be fucking insane. I can't even imagine what it's like outside.
This is gonna be my car.